Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Today we're going to take a look down a road that Jack Webb's career could have gone down as we bring you an unaired pilot for a series called Three for Adventure. Uh, This was recorded sometime in 1949, and the title of this episode is The Story of Roundhouse Rosie and the Siamese Cats. Open, let's go. That's McCullough, Jonathan Cornell. One. Give me a hand, Mac. That's Duke Collider. Two. Wait for me, son. I'm coming. That's Jack's Waco. Three. For adventure. And a rambling and a rolling, loping through the night on a cattle car on a fast break, bucking and bumping in a box car. And it's dark in here and it's hot in here and I don't care. Frying and flying. <laughs> I wish I wasn't all the time homesick. Texas, hot dog. Oil fields and cotton fields and northers and cyclones, prairie dogs and mesquite bushes, cattle and coyotes and copperheads. Beautiful women. Blue bonnets and mockingbirds and sunsets and beautiful women. And blue skies. Why don't you shut up? There are beautiful women in New Orleans, Jack. Ah, of course. And I figure if a fella from Texas is lonesome enough, he ought to do right good with them New Orleans tomatoes. <laughs> How would you working up to it? Jax, you kill me. Always carrying books home from school for some babe with high heel shoes and a low-cut frock. Yeah, lucky ain't it. Looks to me, though, that folks that lives in glass houses ought to go around throwing rocks to get you. You're a sweet and subtle Texas man, ain't you, Jax? Now, what do you mean by all that? All right, boys, all right. Well, well, go on, get some rest. We may need it. Mac. Yeah? Not that I mind, you understand. But all my life I've been riding trains in the dark. Subways, boxcars, always in the dark. Why don't we take a Pullman? We got the dough. Because I want us to get into New Orleans without anyone knowing we're there. Yeah, Mac, why don't you brief us, son? We don't do nothing except that this is the wrong time of the year to go looking for a mighty grass. Yeah. What are we after this time, Mac? Opal. Black opal. Heart shape. Framed in rubies. Worth about $40,000. Mm-hmm. Stolen? Yeah. Pigeon. Carrier pigeon. Took it away. Carrier Hey, Mac. Hmm? You feel good? Yeah, I feel fine. Well, how are we going to catch a pigeon that's done lit somewhere? That's a problem, isn't it? This black opal once belonged to a Mayan princess. It was a gift of the Republic of Honduras to Nehru of India. The supposedly secret messenger stopped off in New Orleans on his way to New Delhi. There he was threatened with death unless he followed instructions. A carrier pigeon was delivered to him by express. He was told to put the opal in a little harness the pigeon wore, then to turn the bird loose. Well, I'll be darned. What, did he do it? He was too frightened not to. Just tossed the little pigeon into the air and watched it fly away with his opal, huh? That's right, too. That was a week ago. Hunts didn't want any publicity, so the legation wired me to see what we do. 
they remembered the job we did for them there. So here we are. Mm-hmm. Black Opal and black-eyed women, hot dog. Fly train, fly. Jax, wake up. We're here. Uh, uh, I was just dreaming about a black-eyed gal named Opal. Slide the door open, Duke. Oh. I don't want to take any chances. Let's get off while the train's still moving. Okay. All right, come on. Not jumping in the sleep. Hey, we're well, always asleep. <laughs> Right through here. Right. Oh, that's pretty slick, Mac. Us coming into town on a freight train. Ain't nobody gonna know we're here. Won't. Oh, come on, let's move. Jack, you idiot. Never mind your gun. Come on, follow me. Well, they're shooting at us, ain't they? Come on, you fathead. Step on it. Three for Adventure, starring Elliot Lewis as Mac, Barton Yarborough as Jax, and Jack Webb as Duke. Tonight's adventure... The story of Roundhouse Rosie and the Siamese Cats. There! Right there! Duck behind that tool shell! Yeah. Right, come on! There. All right, now, still for a moment. No. It's okay. Nobody's coming. Now, who you reckon done that shooting? And how did they know we was here? Slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Slings? Them was bullets, son. Ah, never mind, Jax. <sighs> Gentlemen, welcome to New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Duke, yeah. who'd want this black opal so much he'd commit murder for it? Any ideas? Yeah. Whose hobby is pigeons and whose profession is jewel robbery? <laughs> I learned the answer to that one in night school. That's right, the gypsy. Mm-hmm. He's here, that's why we're here. All right, Duke, you know anyone? I know a dame. You're the knowingest man that I know. He's a Chinese-Spanish bay with headquarters in a waterfront hotel near the Toulouse Street Wharf. Yeah. At least she used to be there. Well, let's go. Part Chinese and part Spanish. Lotus blossoms and chili con carne. Well, what are we waiting All for? All right, simmer down, Jax. What? I think she might know anything we could use, Duke. If she does, will she talk? She'll talk. I keep on saying let's go, so let's go, huh? Yeah, the coast is clear. All right, come on. Well, lucky yonder. They're loading coffee right off of a train onto a big old boat. Up these stairs. All right. Yeah, well, just stick right close to me now, son. I'll take care of everything. Where are you going? Well, didn't the man say up these stairs? Oh, Jex, come off it, will you? You think this baby-faced Xi Ching Lopez is going to talk to a convention? Both of you are staying right here, outside. Well, all right, but can't you say it nice? Oh, Ching, your Xi for you. All right, now look, bonehead, if we all go up there all together, right, you know... All right, break it up. Well, all right, guys always well... always getting in my hair. Go ahead, Duke. Okay. Now, if I'm not down in half an hour, you might look in on room 214, huh? If I have to come get you, I'm going to bust your britches with a board. Jax. I'm hungry, Mac. Uh-huh. Still dark. Same old place. Here we are. Come on, come on, come on. What you want? Open up. Ah. It's Duke Collider. He thinks I is very happy. They're real pretty that way. You talk and we'll keep them happy, huh? Oh, masterful. Very pleasant. Oh, you come see me. A Duke has missionaries interesting to see things. Hmm. Still wearing the little bells, aren't you? I you remember. What do you know about carrier pigeons? Oh, clever, was it not? It makes each thing a shame. Made you a shame? Why? Because I not think of it. The black opal would be like dark fire on Xi Ching's throat. Are you think? 
Yeah, I think. Look, baby, I'm in a hurry. We want that rock. To, to maybe pull an other girl through? You want to stall? You think that's smart? No, no I didn't know what to stall. Well, last time she thinks see you, you run away. Duke, you know what means my name? Teaching. It means a book of poetry. You not want to read poem? I read a poem once. Now, just start talking. Any time now. Look, have I got to remind you of that business you got mixed up in with Rosie? Do I have to tell you what I can do to you? Oh, Duke, you would not want to, would you? Where's the gypsy? You, you ask much for him, teaching. Gypsy are his main wishes. Yeah. You know what he is. Why protect him? Where is he? Sitting like you do. Oh, yeah. Like you too much. Sitting when I speak one little word. Are you understand? Yeah. No one little word. We the same subject now. All right. What do we talk about? It's it very similar. You, you mentioned Rosie. Mm-hmm. I get it. You're nice. And you're safe. Good night, Katie. This time, do not run away. You, you come back to see things? Yeah, but don't wait up, huh? Well, that's it, huh? Does, does Duke remember one called uh, Finder? Finder Lucas? Yes. He worked with Rosie that time also. Yeah, with you and Rosie, I remember. He have a dragon night spot. Go there for a night spot. Do you know? Mm-hmm. You're okay, little one. I might be back here at that. This thing have not said one word. I don't even know your name. Oh. I don't even believe you exist. You come back, Duke? Yeah, yeah. But don't get dusty on a shelf. Night, she chain. Book of poetry. Here you are. All right. Big broken down frame house. About, uh, yeah, about 1105 Felicity Road. Now meet me there in half an hour. Ring the bell three times. Ask for Rosie. Got it? Rosie? Yeah. Roundhouse Rosie. I'll beat it. Driver? I'm not sure of the exact address. Let us off when you get to the 1100 block on Felicity Road. Oh, yeah, sure. Say, you're McCullough Jonathan Cornell, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Never forget a face. Had your lecture once down at the university. Very firm grasp of the subject. Very firm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got a college-type wife. She all the time wants to go to a picture show. Me, I like lectures. It's an escape from unreality, like chasing a black opal. Cigarette? Thanks. Light? Mm-hmm. Thanks. You got yourself a mighty nosy taxi cab, ain't you, sport? Yeah, yeah. You know, that black opal's worth about 40 grand. Your cut will be about 3%. That's uh, $1,200. 40% off for inflation brings it down to about 720 bucks. <laughs> Could be worse. <laughs> you shall buy a chunk of joy, Mr. Wago. Hey, Hold who you... Well... You're a very well-informed man, Mr... Uh, uh, James. Mr. James? Yeah, but uh, don't let it worry you, Mr. Cornell. I'm merely an observer of the passing show. I indulge in other people's business in a purely objective scientific manner. Uh, here we are. Mm-hmm. How much we owe you? Oh, no, no, no. It's on a house, Mr. Cornell. I, I heard your lecture on a pass, so call it even, huh? Uh, watch out for Rosie. They haven't talked about you and Beans. So long. Good luck. Well, I'm a suck egg meal. Does everybody in New Orleans know what we after? How you figure a fellow like that? Is he on a level now? I don't know. I think maybe he is. People like that make me realize I wasn't wrong to stop living under glass. Well, of course you... Huh? <laughs> Nothing, never mind. Anyway, we'll have to take our chances. Well, I just hope you're right. That's all I hope. Knows he wasn't. 
Now, that must be the house right in front of it. Busted down dark old neighborhood, busted down frame building. Felicity yeah. Road. Well, here we go. I'm kind of hungry. Here we are. Where's... Oh, here's the bell. Three times. Yeah, I got it. Hmm. Fine place to live in, huh? Morbid. Foreboding, almost. Ain't enough light around here to light up a full-growth glitter bug. Mm-hmm. Ain't no lights on inside, is it? Mm, none we can see. I don't like it. You know who I expect to answer this doorbell. Hmm? Who? I expect to see a blood-colored ghost yank his door open many, many. Why blood-colored? I don't know. Just seems like a blood-colored ghost ought to open my door. Blood-colored. You got your gun? I forgot again. You don't carry one. Um... Should I ought to mash on the doorbell some more? No, it's late. It's late, maybe. Wait a minute. Here comes someone. All right. What you want? Are you Miss Rosie? Miss Rosie? Who are you looking for? I believe we would ask for a... Uh... Brown house, Rosie. That's you, ain't it? Could be. Could be, is. You look like Jax. a... Well, she does. Duke Collider said he'd meet us here. Duke Collider? Why, he... Get inside. You stay inside quite a lot, don't you, Rosa? Right, boy. Smart. Who are you, smart boys? I'm a color Jonathan Cornell. This is Jex Waco. Waco? You're kidding who? Well, they didn't nobody baptize you roundhouse, did they? I wonder how you'd look with your tongue split. Ooh, ain't we got us a hostage? Jax. Go in the parlor. You're coming with... Be there in a minute. On in! I wonder what that means. Oh, probably just a little female detail, like tucking her pet copper heads to sleep. <laughs> Man, ain't she a character? Not so loud. Four hundred pounds of blubber and lard all dressed up, my mother hovered with butterflies on it. And did you get that jewelry she's wearing? Necklace, earrings, and bracelets, all made out of shit. Now look, Jax, you keep your mouth shut. What, huh? That woman's dangerous, can't you see that? Maybe so, sir, huh? Them little pig eyes. Well, so which, Mac? What you getting at? Well, you keep needling her. She hates you already. Now cut it out. Oh, I would just who wrong. Well, she won't take it. Now remember that. Come on, let's go in the parlor. I must be through those curtains. You know, got my foot in my big mouth already. Oh, here we are. Wow. Huh? How's this for a study in bad taste? Ooh, we silver and gold paint all over everything. Oh, and looky on it. What? That divan or that uh, Devon well, Porter. Chair. Especially made for Rosie, I imagine. Why, that darn thing is five foot across. Man, what a fat right, female. be quiet. Wanted to hear you. Oh, Mac, hey, look at them pictures on the wall. Woo! Wouldn't they turn your grandma's damper down? Not my grandma. Oh, I know this, and she used to dance in a funhouse on the Barbary Coast. Yeah, her name was... Hey, Mac- hey, oh, hey, oh, well, holy cow. What was that? It was a cat. A cat? That streak of gray was a cat? It's bigger than a possum. It's a big Siamese cat. They can be trained to attack people. Huh. Just missed me, didn't you? Oh, nice sidestep. It's gone now. That's the biggest darn thing. Hey, Mac. Look. What? There. There in the window. Look at that thing. Hmm. Oh. Rosie must go in for big Siamese cats. But, Mac, look at its eye. Or where his eye was. Yeah. Poor thing. Oh, I don't like that. Staring at us with one vacant eye, bow-legged, ugly old rat trap. Yeah, he's a big fella, too. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Mac, I would. 
Here, kitty. <laughs> See what you mean. What's he doing to that cat? Oh, Rosie. Well, nothing. I was just being friendly. Well, don't. I ain't friendly with nobody but me. Cyclops. Cyclops, come here. Yeah. Now, wait, 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 I sit down. Now, up there, honey. Now, where's the other one? Vima, come here. It's amazing. They come to you when you whistle? What? Up, up, Vima, up. There, now. Settle down, honey. Well, what do you know? Three of a kind. Full of witty sayings. Ain't you, Texas man? If Duke's coming, why ain't he here? Coming in here, insulting a girl in her own house. Look at the girl. There you go, there you go. Rosie, listen to me. He doesn't mean anything. He's just stupid sometimes. Just don't pay any attention to him. Well, that's more like it. He just doesn't understand that you're sensitive. Oh, that's right. I am a sensitive girl. Oh, boy. Of course you are. Mac, you're a nice boy. You're an awful nice boy. Well, thank you, Miss Rosie. <laughs> you're all right. Uh, I could kind of go for you myself. <laughs> He's laughing. He's laughing at me. I'm a psychopath. Underlay. Oh, Duke. Psych up. Vima. Mind mama now. All right. Much better. I I didn't know you was here. Yeah, where did you come from, son? There was a couple of gorillas prowling out front. I come in the back way. But but the back way's locked tighter than Oh, locks don't mean nothing to Duke. Why Who's prowling get... out front, Duke? I don't know, but I didn't like it. Sit down, Rosie. Let's talk. A long heart-to-heart -heart talk, huh? And you'll talk, won't you, doll baby? Sure. Sure, Duke. Because I like you. I always liked you. Still carrying a torch for me, huh, Rosie? Oh, besides, I ain't forgetting nothing. Well, don't. You see, Mac, Rosie was a bad girl once. You see? But I'm no tattletale. So she's on our side. Oh, I always been for you, Duke. Remember the time when... I'd I... rather talk about carrier pigeons, Rosie. Pigeons? Why, well, I don't know nothing about pigeons. Look, how'd you like me to shove that one-eyed cat down your fat throat? Don't! Don't do nothing to my cat, Then quit Duke. stalling, will you? I don't know nothing. Not a thing. Sure enough. You know the gypsy, don't you? The gypsy? Yes, the gypsy. Gyp the Dodge. Gypsy Hugan. Oh, I... I know of them. Now, look, fatso, I've been to Lucas. He ain't throwing me no curves. You know that. And you know where the gypsy is right this minute. Don't lie to me. What makes you think I... Lucas gets around, don't he? That brindle face, Drake. Never mind all that, either. He talks to me or else. Same as you. Now, come on. Spill it. I... I don't know nothing. Oh, yeah. You know something that seems like a real nice idea, Roundhouse? What? What you gonna do? You ain't gonna How'd do... you like me to put out that cat's other eye? No! Duke, no. You can't do that. You Wait can't. a minute, Duke. Mac, let me alone. There's just one way Hold to get it. this. All right. Rosie, try to understand this. You know, that opal's worth more than $40,000. A lot more you can't count in dollars. But did you know that whoever wears that opal has the shadow of death on him? It's history's written in blood. But the cats, it ain't their fault. They ain't done nothing. We don't want to hurt the cats. Or you either. Look at it this way. We're going to get the gypsy anyway, that's certain. But you ain't got a thing on the gypsy, Mac. Who else? Oh, look, Blubber Meat, we Jax. know... All right, I just wanted to tell this refugee from a sideshow that we know that the gypsy's profession is ransom notes and that his hobby is pig. She knows all that. Well... How about it, Rosie? Work with us this one time, it'll be better for you. I don't know nothing. Well, huh? maybe Duke's right. You won't work with us, I suppose. What was that? What, what, what was it, Duke? Flashlight at the window. On and off, twice. <laughs> all right, you saw it, Rosie. Who is it? Just my night watchman, Duke. That's all. Just my watchman. Yeah? What do you think, man? I imagine we can take care of things. You want me to go get him? I'll call him if you want him. 
But you know something? I'm going to help you boys out. Max right. I hope you mean that, Rosie. Oh, I do. I'll help you, Mac. I'll help all I can. That's the ticket. I like to do something nice for a fine young man like you. I don't like this. Oh, it ain't every day I get a chance to be a real nice, kind, thoughtful girl. Watch it, guys. So, you know, I'm changing over. I'm going to be a good, sweet girl. What are you waiting for? Now! <laughs> now, Rosie? What this? What? We're, we're looking yonder. Man's got a gun on us. Where'd you come from? Where does it look like? That panel's a door for just such times as this. What were you waiting for? <laughs> waiting for them to turn their backs all at the same time. You know better than to pull a gag like this on me. You know better than to put a gag like this on me. Oh. Yep. Yeah, Rosie? Where's Hunter and Kiddo Barnes? Uh, kiddo's in the hall and Hunter's, you know, looking up. <laughs> all right, Rosie. Your deal. <laughs> you bet it's my deal. <laughs> Well, it sure is funny, ain't it? Jack, shut up. Uh, yeah, shut up. Yeah, you shut up, all right. Kiddo Barnes will shut him up. Won't he, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, you wouldn't... That is Barnes. We know about him, of course. Well, of course we do. Law wants him bad. He kind of tortured somebody, didn't he? Law wants him. Uh, know something, this fella, huh? <laughs> know something. We'll fix that. Got everything ready, Jim? Everything. <laughs> You know me. She does. She oughtn't to admit it. He's talking, Rosie. (laughs) Talking. We don't like that, do we, Rosie? No, we don't. You're going to get to know Gypsy and the cats real well, Texas man. Real well. Well, it might be better knowing that kid old Barnes at that. Think so? (laughs) Rosie, would you mind dropping this cat and mouse stuff? I kind of would. Gypsy's too smart for a boy scout like you, Mac. You were shattered from the minute they contacted you. And a friend of Gyps was riding a boxcar behind you. You see what I mean? And you've completely forgotten what Duke could have done to you but didn't. Me should have. Well, if he's been right with you... I don't know why I should tell you anything except that you're... You're such a beautiful man. This guy, Duke, now, he ain't said nothing. That's right. Because he didn't know all about it. He don't know about that dead copper, for instance. He thought it was just running a little rum into a dry state. Anyway, he didn't talk. But look, handsome... How could I know when he might find out the rest of it? How'd I know the law wasn't going to visit me any minute? How could I tell he ain't going to change his mind anyhow? He didn't. What do you think would happen if he got away from me now? I just told him about the dead cop, didn't I? I see. I've been worrying three years. And who should bust right into my parlor tonight but the laddie with the finger? So, he ain't never going to get away from here. Not alive, he ain't. That goes for Jax and me also? I feel kind of bad about you. You're so pretty. (laughs) But him, a Texas man. Want to hear something, Texas man? Tell me anything. You see that one-eyed cat? Ugly devil, ain't Them claws of his get thirsty. See what I mean? You're going to be sobbing like a little tiny boy pretty quick now. You mean you're going to... The kid always happier around my basement when he's got something to remember. You said you knew about him, didn't you? Yes, we know. Chip, he says he knows! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the boys are kind of three of a kind. You made a crack about three of a kind, didn't you, Tex man? Rosie, why don't you hurt? Duke Jackson, remember that time in Shanghai? Underlay! Underlay! <laughs> 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 Just one more little detail. I just wanted to make sure about that kiddo Barnes. Now I'm all right. Jax, you all in one piece? Oh, I'm as right as a fox on a cloudy morning, son. Wasn't that fun? With Rosie. Oh. And she's even uglier sleeping when she's awake. Well, who... What happened to her? It must have been an accident. I was aiming for the gypsy's ear. Jax, you didn't hit a woman. Well, like I say, it was an accident. I think. Uh, but, Mac, well, what I can't figure out is, is how come them cats sprung like that and give us a chance to start the fight? 
Yeah, that was pretty smart, Mac. Ma- what Mac did? Well, don't you remember what Rosie said just before the cats lunged at you? When you were laughing at her? Oh, what? She said, Andale. Those cats are trained to attack, and hers were taught to spring at that command, Andale. Oh, just like you say, sick them to a dog? That's right. She had such a deep voice, I whispered the command just as she... Mac, Jack, look here. What? Look what I got here. Well, of all things. Well, I'll be done. There it is. The gypsy gave the opal to Rosie for safekeeping. There, see the shell necklace she was wearing. Uh Uh-huh. Look here. Each shell opens up, like, see? And here, in the big one. Busted. That opened during the fight. The black opal. Oh, we found it. Yeah, that's it. What? Hand it over, boys. Well, if it ain't that nosy taxi cab again, I had me a suspicion you'd show up around now. Yeah, very little cultural activity in the night, so I thought I'd drop in. Give me the black opal collider. You wouldn't want to pay what it'll cost. Well, maybe I won't have to. Maybe I'll get it for free. Give it to him, Duke. Let him come and get it. I said give it to him. Mac, he's such a little thing. He'd be kind of like dessert. <laughs> All right, boys. I want you to meet Mr... James. Mr. James. Of the U.S. Secret Service. What? Well, huh? Glad to meet you, boys. Thanks a lot, Mr. Cornell. Yeah. You boys saved me a lot of work. I appreciate that. You see, we couldn't do anything ourselves. We weren't supposed to know about it. Uh, don't worry about your fee. That's none of our business. Huh? <laughs> Gotta go. Gotta take my wife to a movie. Always movies. Uh. Well. Well. Well, let's get on out of here, son. I'm hungry. You're hungry. Yeah, I'm going to get me some chop suey and some chip. Hey, Dew. Yeah? I know I'm taking a chance, but I'll give you $8 for Xi Ching's telephone number. Mm-mm. No, sir. Oh, why not? All right, gonna... all right. Well, argue well, about it later, gentlemen. Let's get something to eat. Well, well look, son, I can use it. Oh, Three for Adventure stars Jack Webb as Duke. Elliot Lewis as Mac, and Barton Yarborough as Jex. Heard also were High Aberback as Gypsy, Lillian Byeff as Shi Ching, Sidney Miller as the taxi driver, Mr. James, and Jeanette Nolan as Roundhouse Rosie. Next week at the same time, we bring you the story of the Quadroon Princess and the Egyptian Tear Vase. Three for Adventure is produced and directed by David Friedkin. This is a Command Radio production. Welcome back. That was not one of Jeanette Nolan's subtler performances. And while Barton Yarborough almost always has the Texas accent, you know, it's one of those things he was cast for, I think this may be the most Texan character he played. I did like that Rosie called him on the uh, Tex Waco uh, name. And he had a good retort, you weren't baptized roundhouse. Now, I guess it's a good idea to talk about this a bit in context. In many ways, this was a, an attempt to... Uh, to kind of do a takeoff or a uh, new version of uh, I Love a Mystery. I Love a Mystery had been a serialized uh, detective series from 1939 to 1944. It was produced by Carlton Morse, and it actually spawned three films. And there was a fourth film that was made that only featured one of the uh, stars of the original series. And so it seems that David Friedkin definitely saw some potential uh, in creating an I Love a Mystery type series, but making it maybe a bit more hard-boiled, as you had these three friends from different backgrounds teaming up. Yarborough is kind of helpful in terms of uh, creating an I Love a Mystery-like series, as he was in the original radio series and also uh, in uh, three uh, films. Uh, Now, I I do think there are several things that this series does right. Uh, It's got a lot of great people that were involved in it. Uh, Not only Jack Webb, but you have Elliot Lewis, and, of course, uh, Freakin, Yarborough, Jeanette Nolan. So this is a pretty solid effort. And there are some good things, you know, in terms of the characters. 
At the end of this first episode, you do have a bit of an idea about what each of these uh, characters is all about. The big problem is that none of them are particularly likable. Uh, Duke may be the worst just because, you know, he is really this thug who is uh, not all that reformed and is always snipping at everyone. And Tex is a bit over the top, and Elliot Lewis's character is a bit uh, distant. So, you know, I think those are some of the reasons it didn't work out. I'm kind of glad it's here, just as kind of a one-off thing. You know, it's a bit of a uh, romp, and kind of fun for just the ridiculousness of it. I am really glad that it did not uh, catch on. Because the talented people who made this interesting one-off episode were going to make uh, some great radio in 1949. Of course, Webb and Yarborough, they'd go on and make Dragnet. Elliot Lewis would direct and produce Broadway's My Beat with uh, David Friedkin as one of the writers along with Mort Fine. Had this radio series actually gotten someone to buy it, uh, almost certainly Jack Webb would not have uh, had to scramble and come up with the idea of Dragnet as a summer replacement series on NBC, and we may not have gotten uh, the... Uh, Greatness of Broadway is my beat, and instead got, you know, like 78 episodes of this. So, I think definitely all turned out for the best. All right, well, that's actually all for now. Join us back here on Wednesday as we continue our Jack Webb Centennial Celebration. If you do have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.